Okay, today guys, we're going to talk about um, how I pick out elements to extend on on the cards when I'm bringing them over the borders. Uh, I've been doing this more and more frequently, and uh, I've gotten a question or two about how how I choose what I'm doing to do, what I'm going to do with those. So, like, for instance, this is a recent altar that I did, a disenchant. Um, on this card you can see that uh, it's pretty much just you know a one color background and then there's the two figures in the foreground but the thing is is there's no real easy way to extend these figures in the foreground too much um, unless like I bring these talons over or something like that but because these figures are kind of in the same range of field uh, I'd probably have to bring both figures all the way down and then that's going to block some of the text and stuff which I choose typically not to do. So um, like this is an example of where I didn't I didn't do an extension. Over here though, for instance, here's a windswept heath that I uh, that I put up and this is this is a more recent altar as well and you can see that I've added the like the top of this tree figure on the windswept heath going over the border but and the lower portion the shadow and all that doesn't go onto the border uh it's we just have the background colors and everything else and it's just coming up over the title box uh the reason being that it will give additional depth for having the higher part uh popping out over that you just kind of have to follow what the the image is is allowing for in this particular piece I, I did that and actually in the in the next piece in this Jason's ingenuity that I've already done um, it's kind of the same thing too like we have the background we have all this smoke or like this uh, this magical effect swirling around Jace you know that he's conjuring and uh, it's kind of difficult to see but just over the the top border right there you know there's a a little bit of that blue white hue like going on to the title border but I didn't do it too much I just wanted to get a little bit of a of, of a presence there which helps the the whole image I think kind of pop out in general um, so typically like before when I first started doing Angels of Serenity I dropped everything behind the boxes but you can see here like again it's still pretty much all behind the box even though this figure is in the foreground I certainly could bring her legs down onto the card and bring her sword and like completely make that figure jump out over the rest but uh, I chose not to because part of it is is the relevant information as far as the converted mana cost um, and then if I brought her down onto it I may cover some of the text which could be relevant and I, I like to keep my cards legal for gameplay so what I chose to do is because of her angle, I bring just the the sword that's made out of energy over the border a little bit, which is okay because you can still see what the casting cost is, and at the same time, you can uh, it, it doesn't help the element pop out. But that sword is the furthest in the foreground of the entire figure, um, possibly with this other sword being at that at that same type of distance. But I still choose to leave that further back because you can see that her wing on the left side here, which would be her right side, is smaller in comparison to the right, so I, I try to follow suit with the uh, with the card art. Um, or here, I've got a Soren that I've yet to work on. This is an example of what Wizards is now currently doing with their card art as far as bringing things over the border. So you can see the top of his head is uh, is coming out, but the sword for some reason isn't, and also his fingers are not. So his legs are still going in the background, and then the, the trees and everything like that. Uh, I've already done one altar, which I don't have with me, of bringing the sword out and his hand, which makes the the overall look of the card pop out a little bit more, but uh, it makes it look like he is actually approaching and that he's just about to break through the, the, the border. Um, I'm going to do a video here of me altering th think twice and that'll be right at the end of the uh, the the video right now and uh, what I'm gonna do just to show you um, on this recorded video is I'm gonna bring out the the background or I'm drop out the the border like I typically do but 
the element that's the most in the foreground is this hand. These two hands are extending out um, further than the figure in the background. So I'm not going to bring her forehead or, or these swords or uh, anything that's that's behind her. She's actually still going to be behind the border, but I'm going to just extend that the end of that finger out, and then I'm also going to add what's called a drop shadow over uh, the the text box here, the, the title box. And what that's going to do, I'm going to add a drop shadow for uh, the middle and the forefinger on her hand there. That'll give the impression of the hand sticking out slightly further than, than it actually is. Um, and this is a technique that I've been uh, experimenting more and more with altars and adding drop shadows. So you're going to get to see the whole altar plus uh, going over the borders a little bit and uh, adding a drop shadow on. So this is kind of whenever you're going to do a process like this, all you have to do is take a minute or two, look at the card, look at what's in the foreground or what is closest to your eye, what's largest, and then decide if that's something that's worth bringing over onto the border. If, if for instance, this hand were further down towards the middle, I probably wouldn't bring it over the border. But because one of the fingers is actually being obscured by it, it's close enough that I can add a little drop shadow and it's gonna, it's gonna make it uh, look a little bit nicer. So I hope that uh, you enjoyed that video.